Okay, but I'm the latest one. My guest today is someone who has spearheaded the uh, vision of the glitch of working with ambitious businesses like Netflix, LinkedIn, Hindustan Unilever. She's someone who has truly built a gender inclusive organization. We are pleased to have with us today Pooja Johri, CEO of the Glitch. Hi, Pooja. Thank have you. you been holding up? Uh, I mean, as well as can be, to be honest. Uh, but thank you for having me. Uh, it's obviously a challenging time for everyone in the world. Um, and I'm sure we're all doing our, our bits to stay positive and keep moving forward every day. Absolutely. So tell me, how has life changed after lockdown for agencies like yours? And what were the initial hiccups when you started working? Uh, what, were there any operational challenges and how did you adapt to those? Now. Sure. Um, so, you know, to start with uh, something positive and then going on to the obvious challenges that a Absolutely. lot of organizations would have had, right? Um, we have taken decisions, rejigged, um, you know, our business operations, our services, areas which would have otherwise taken us a few years to go back and reflect and do. You know, I think we, we really leaped forward um, and taken some very, very quick and decisive decisions over the last four months to ensure that we are, as an organization, ready for, you know, what's to come. Uh, because I do think that, you know, while things are still changing and everyone's talking about the new normal, the new normal is yet to come once things come, uh, you know, once uh, there are, there's a vaccine or there is a medication or whatever, you know, uh, it, it'll really reflect on the kind of areas that we don't we, we you know we continue to take forward from lockdown uh, the right. good of the lockdown how do we take that forward you know one such example for me is really how um, you know I, I know for sure that at least for the foreseeable future I wouldn't have more than 50 to 60 percent of my workforce in in back in office because uh, I just would want to ensure that everyone is able to get you know, the work-life balance, which has been, uh, uh, you know, something that is unheard of in agency lives, right? So I think that has been, the, you know, a definite positive. But besides that, I feel, uh, you know, a lot of agencies like ours that are, are digital natives, digital first, a, a lot of our talent is uh, you know, very equipped to work online. We've been doing this for many years. The transition was not uh, as difficult. Um, you know, uh, there were obviously the initial hiccups, also the initial excitement of being able to work remotely. Then it sort of went into the process of, oh my God, this is what I have to be doing for the, you know, for a fairly long time, uh, keeping all of those things in mind, I think people rejigged very quickly as an organization, you know, very, we were very quick to adapt to newer, uh, you know, remote working policies and ensuring that, you know, we also handle to the best of our ability, mental health and the mental health crisis that, um, you know, that everyone is really feeling and going through. Right. So also, if you can take us to one of your work, done during lockdown and how did it all come together? Maybe you work on Netflix. Um, you know, that's a, that's a good example. The Netflix home stories piece uh, was, was uh, you know, executed. Everything was done remotely from, you know, from the actors to producers to directors. Uh, everyone uh, worked out of a completely different location. And I think it was a very ambitious project, something that we wouldn't have imagined if someone had told us even a few months before lockdown that this is how you will put together an entire series, we would have laughed it off. But, um, you know, we have an incredible team at Glitch. My colleagues are extremely, uh, you know, extremely capable and we have the best unit, I believe, in the industry for people, you know, to be able to pull off something of this scale uh, with the quality that we were able to pull off. Right. Also tell me, what is the general mood like in terms of client spending? Are they now ready to like spend or are they tightening their purse strings? Do you see green shoots now? Are they having conversations? Uh, so, you know, let's start from when the, the whole pandemic actually hit us and, uh, you know, clients reacted differently, different categories reacted differently. Entertainment was a different reaction versus an FMCG or, you know, or, or other industries for that matter. Um, and is it moving? Is it getting better? Uh, I think it is, you know, the everyone's realizing the endlessness of it. Everyone's realizing that this situation is not a 
um, a 21 day or a one month or a two month lockdown anymore, right? This is the situation we're going to be in for the foreseeable future. So we now all have to get on with our lives and clients, brands, customers, we're all seeking a level of normalcy. And as we seek normalcy, um, uh, you know, our, to a certain extent, the experiences that we would want are also, uh, you know, we're going to desire them all over again. So we are going to want, you know, to spend on brands and brands are going to definitely want to advertise. So we def we're we seeing a lot of movements coming up. But you know, one thing to note here is that the customer acquisition cost will definitely go down now because the today's customer is so connected. I mean, we have a hyper connected consumer today because of what happened during lockdown, you know, just the shock of the fact that I'm not going to be able to go out and buy something has even made my mom is living with me um, over the lockdown period and helping me with my daughter. So my husband and I can still, you know, work while we're at home. And uh, I can see how connected she is uh, on her phone and how easy it is for her to order or, you know, or to speak with her sisters in different parts of the world or engage even in community groups within, uh, you know, in the area that we live in. So it's hyper connected and brands are being very, very smart. I feel MarTech and an omni-channel presence in a time like this is going to be great for businesses because your acquisition costs are going to go down. You're no longer just having to spend on TV to, uh, you know, acquire consumers. So I think it's interesting. It's a great time for everybody. Right. Apart from obviously the stress of the pandemic and, and the scariness of it, there are, you know, fewer areas of opportunity for sure. Interesting. So also this entire situation has brought in a great deal of upheaval in the way we work. Where do you see yeah. the green shoots of opportunity or uh, new areas, new opportunities that have like kind of cropped up new ways of working? Um, I, you know, I, the, something that I said at the start, right, that we have this unique opportunity to rewrite the agency life narrative, you know, the agency work life narrative. And I think that if we're able to do this well, and you know, we're working on it very actively, as I said, I would definitely want us to continue having in rotation remote working as well. So just imagine if you're able to, you know, rent out an Airbnb somewhere by the beach and still continue to do, you know, still continue to work. Um, and if, the, if we allow people to have those opportunities and for talent to have those opportunities, it would be fantastic. It completely re, you know, it, it, we've, we have completely changed the, the, you know, the concept of having to work inside office to be efficient. Um, and that is interesting. It's a great opportunity for us. Um, you know, on the factor of efficiency, we will as a, as a business unit be far more efficient as well, because I feel you know, sluggish costs on, on rent and on travel, etc., can really be managed better to reinvest in our talent and reinvest in acquiring newer talent or having different kind of pay packages or larger bonuses or whatever. I think, you know, we're still discovering everything that we can, as we start taking long-term decisions, um, we can, we, uh, you know, we have a unique opportunity to really also change that, that agencies don't really pay that well. Um, right. You know, I'm still discovering it. I'm really hoping that we're able to get to that direction, but at least that's the intent. And, uh, you know, we don't, uh, over lockdown, we have, people from we we acquired consultants and people from different parts of the country and the world and that was interesting we would not have been able to do that um had things been in a normal state we're being able to use skill sets uh from across the globe and it's a great opportunity for us because we're no longer restricted to geography the other one is collaboration i have never seen my offices collaborate the way they are right now um, you know, if you were to look at a Bombay or a Delhi, they were always two units doing their own thing. But today, again, not restricted by geography, the kind of collaboration that this is breeding, the kind of, uh, you know, uh, growth it is breeding, it's, it's fantastic. And I really hope that continues. And the last one is the, you know, this notion of being on, of doing an online meeting is inefficient. Uh, I think the number of memes that have existed on the internet about, you know, things like I took a five o'clock, 5 a.m. Uh, flight to go to Delhi, which was actually a 30 minute meeting on Zoom, you know, just those kind of memes that have been going around on the internet are proof enough that I mean, that we can be so much more efficient with our time and do so much more in our day if we're not wasting it on travel. 
Um, so these are some of the opportunities that I see um, for organizations as we move forward. So on a lighter note, what are you missing the most about you, about your office? About my office, I'm I'm definitely missing all of my colleagues and the just being you know to be honest, having human contact, right? To being being able to hug them or or uh, you know be in brainstorms together or the thrill of being sitting in front of a client and doing a meeting those are all exciting you know th those are areas i miss but i'm also the kind of person that believes in in looking at the glass half full sort of a scenario where uh, there is there is a lot of good that we can take out of this as well and reinvent our business model um, that that is a huge opportunity for us today right so uh, you know, there's been a dreadful, there's been a stream of dreadful news affecting our lives. Plus, there's video fatigue, and people tell me that work from home is almost like work 24/7. So how are yeah. you kind of motivating your teams? What are your teams telling you? Yeah, I mean, there is there is no denying that. I feel it myself that uh, I'm I'm a lot more tired than I used to be when I used to be traveling and going to work or. I mean, there is no denying the fact that there is video fatigue and uh, and all of the areas of just the stress that we're working constantly. But again, I see that as the world starts opening up again, and we are no, no longer restricted to just doing this from our homes, that we have the opportunity to have a breather and go out into a restaurant, go watch a movie and come back, but still operate uh, during work hours remotely. That is where the shift will really come in. And I don't think right now when we're all still in lockdown, but as the world opens up and our policies really come into play where we, you know, where we balance out remote and office working, um, I, I think there is a, there is a, there is something there that could really unlock uh, a lot for us. Interesting. So lastly, what would be your message to brands and agencies on how they should cut through the clutter rather than being it? So, uh, you know, the rules don't change uh, to advertising and marketing. We've got to be authentic. Uh, you know, people today, we, we, they need to be real. They need to be, uh, you know, we need to realize that every moment is not a moment to, to market. Um, and the principles of marketing and advertising don't necessarily change. But the availability of the kind of this, of speaking to a hyper-connected consumer is a brilliant opportunity. I, we've leaped 10 years. Uh, you know, that I've, I've read somewhere that COVID is the chief transformation slash, slash digital officer of the world. I mean, something that would have taken 10 years has already happened. So brands and agencies need to capitalize on that. Uh, because you have a hyper-connected consumer where, and you're going to be able to get, reach that consumer at a far lesser acquisition cost. So huge opportunity for us um, as brands, I, uh, you know, ones that have not invested in MarTech or omni-channel uh, or have an omni-channel presence, this is the time to do it. And for agencies like us, I think it's just about while the idea is always going to be central, but the number of platforms and the uniqueness of which we can talk to consumers uh, is a very rich playing field for us. So, I mean, let's make the most of it. Perfect. Thank you so much, Pooja, for this very delightful, very insightful conversation. I hope to see you at your office. Things get back to normal. Yes, Take I care. Stay so connected. Take care. All the best. Stay safe. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.